today we are going to be discussing the function of the nephron here we have our nephron the unit of kidney mainly responsible for production of urine in order to get rid of excess water and toxic waste products there are approximately 1 million nephrons in each kidney at this end of the nephron blood enters in via afferent arteriole and passed through a network of capillaries called glomerulus and leaves via the efferent arteriole as this occurs components of the blood filtered out into an area known as bowman's capsule the filtered components collectively known as glomerular filtrate which pass into the tubules eventually enters the last part the collecting duct and exist as urine human kidney typically produce about 180 liters per day of this filtrate yet only 1 to 2 liters of urine are produced each day this means only 1% of the filtrate manages to leave the nephrons so what happens to the other 99% for the most part filtrate is reserved back into the blood at several locations along the tubule but how the reservation occurs well the efferent arteriole doesn't just end there it branches out to form capillaries which surrounded the tubules of the nephron reservation is the movement of substances out of the tubules across the surrounding interstitial fluid into the blood of the capillaries there is another thing called secretion which occurs in small amounts in the nephron this is the process whereby substances move from blood through the interstitial fluid into the tubules let's zoom in the first part of the journey where filtration occurs this is an introductory video i am going to explain in detail in future videos basically most components of the blood except for blood cells and majority of the proteins are squeezed out between the pores of the glomerulus to reach the bowman's capsule so the glomerular filtrate contains substances such as water glucose amino acid and inorganic ions such as sodium chloride potassium and bicarbonate it also contains waste products like creatinine and urea small amounts of these substances in the blood are okay but they are harmful in large doses hence the body reads itself of significant amounts via the kidneys the next destination for the filtrate is the proximal convoluted tubule convoluted simply means twisted or coiled this region is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and substances pass from apical side to the basolateral side of the cells out into the interstitial fluid approximately 65% of sodium ions are reserved here through various methods as we all know positive attracts negative so naturally wherever sodium ions go chloride ions follow other negative ions do so too as you may know sodium chloride is the formula of common table salt so it would be pretty salty outside the table if it wasn't for the fact that 65% of the water leaves by osmosis so water also faithfully follows the sodium and chloride ion 65% of the potassium is reabsorbed as well as 90% of the bicarbonate ions which are important in maintaining the ph of the blood but glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed around 100% back into the blood to be used in the process such as respiration and making proteins here i would like to mention that not all the urea leaves the nephron in the urine as about 50% is reabsorbed ammonia as well as various medications are secreted into the tubule the next part of the nephron is loop of henle which has a descending limb in which filtrate travels down and ascending limb in which filtrate travels up the thin segment of loop is lined by squamous epithelium now the loop of henle dips down into the region of kidney known as medulla 
This region is highly salty. Why? Because sodium is actively pumped out of the thick ascending limb followed by chloride. But water itself cannot follow because of ascending limb is impermeable to water. So this makes interstitial fluid salty. However, the descending limb is permeable to water but has very low permeability to ions such as sodium and also urea. So as the filter travels down the descending limb, water leaves by osmosis because of the salty environment of the medulla or you can say it is hyperosmolar. By the time the filter reaches the bottom of the loop, it is highly concentrated as significant amount of water have left. However, the story is different in the ascending limb whereby any water that remains cannot escape the filtrate. Sodium chloride on the other hand lives passively from the thin ascending limb. So after this process have occurred the filtrate is diluted. In total approximately 25% of the sodium chloride is reabsorbed from the loop of Henle. In order to avoid cell damage, the amount of water and salts in the body needs to be kept regulated. As excess amount is toxic for our body and nephron plays a vital role in this. The distal convoluted tubule which is made up mostly by simple cuboidal cells is the place where initial adjustment are made to the filtrate. Under the influence of hormone aldosterone, sodium is reabsorbed followed by chloride. While potassium and hydrogen ion are secreted into the tubule, almost all remaining bicarbonate is reabsorbed. And although the distal convoluted tubule is normally impermeable to water, small amounts may be reabsorbed here too. The collecting duct which is composed of principal and intercalated cells is where the final adjustments take place before the filtrate leaves as urine. Here sodium chloride is reabsorbed in addition to urea. Although urea can re-enter the tubule at the loop of Henle in the process known as urea recycling. But what about water? Levels of water in the collecting duct are regulated by the hormone ADH or anti-diuretic hormone which can alter the permeability of collecting duct so that water can reabsorbed back to the blood. For example, if you are dehydrated, ADH activate the genetic machineries and produced more aquaporin channels which eventually get inserted into the epithelium and allowing water to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Remember, the medulla is salty. So if water is given the opportunity to live, it will. On the other hand, if you are overhydrated, secretion of ADH in the blood will be less. So collecting duct will be less permeable to water so that excess water can pass out of the urine. So we can say that collecting duct is selectively permeable to water which is regulated by antidiuretic hormone. In general, urine contains water, sodium, chloride, potassium, urea and creatinine as well as other inorganic substances. That's all guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, comment and share and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.